With each passing decade, America's urban population continues to expand, while the percentage of Americans who hunt and fish grows smaller. According to a 2011 survey by the National Wildlife Service, only about one out of 10 Americans now participate in hunting or fishing. That means nine out of 10 Americans have little knowledge or appreciation of our nation's rich heritage of hunting and fishing, or the vital role hunters and anglers play in wildlife management. And that's a problem, because in the last two decades, citizens in 30 states have voted on over 50 ballot initiatives affecting sportsmen's rights. The vast majority of these voters do not hunt or fish, and are often uninformed about the importance of scientific wildlife management, leaving them prey to the emotional rhetoric of mass media campaigns sponsored by special interest groups. This is the story of one such campaign that an animal rights group opposed to hunting ran in Colorado in the early 1990s. The result? A misinformed Colorado public voted to outlaw spring bear hunting, and then a few years later, trapping on public lands. The Division of Wildlife, which was limited by state law from lobbying, was powerless to act. To protect their interests, a determined group of local hunters and fishermen banded together and created a remarkable program that protects their state's hunting and fishing heritage for generations to come, and serves as a model sportsmen's groups across the country can use in their states. With the financial backing of hunters, anglers, and wildlife management organizations, this dedicated group worked with the state legislature to pass a series of bills that created the blueprint and initial funding source for what was originally known as the Wildlife Management Education Fund, later shortened to the Wildlife Council. Their goal? Create the nation's first comprehensive mass media campaign to explain to the non-hunting and non-fishing public the importance of scientific wildlife management and the vital role hunters and anglers play in wildlife management. The initial voluntary checkoff would allow the council to fund a pilot program to prove the concept of a public education campaign and to confirm through research that sportsmen would support a surcharge on hunting and fishing licenses to pay for the program. The initial program was a resounding success, raising over $200,000 in voluntary contributions the accompanying research confirmed that Colorado hunters and anglers strongly supported a surcharge on hunting and fishing licenses of between $1 and $3 to pay for an ongoing public information campaign. Armed with the results of the pilot program, the determined members of the Wildlife Council went back to the Colorado State Legislature. Despite a series of setbacks and delays lasting two years, they continued to successfully educate state legislators until 2005, when the Colorado House of Representatives passed House Bill 1266, which secured permanent funding for an annual public awareness campaign. The long-term viability of the program was ensured through three key provisions built into the original legislation. First, the bill provided for permanent funding tied to the sale of hunting and fishing licenses. Second, the funds were dedicated for the public awareness campaign and could not be diverted for other uses. And third, the law created an independent citizen council charged with managing the funds. From the start, the mission of the Wildlife Council was clear, to develop a comprehensive media-based program to educate the urban, non-hunting, non-fishing public about the value of wildlife and wildlife management, why hunting and fishing are essential tools in wildlife management, and how hunters and anglers provide the majority of funding for wildlife management. The Wildlife Council is made up of nine members, representing sportsmen from around the state, local governments that are economically impacted by hunting and fishing, related industries, a marketing expert, and a representative of the Colorado Division of Parks and Wildlife. The Council was established as a citizen advisory board, independent of any state agency and charged with administering the funds. Each year, the Council works with an outside advertising agency to develop a strategic marketing plan. The Council meets bi-monthly with its ad agency to approve new ad concepts and monitor progress of the mass media campaign. Initially, the campaign focused on educating the non-hunting and non-fishing public about the value of wildlife, protecting our natural resources, and the fact that wildlife management in Colorado 
is paid for with license fees from hunters and anglers, not tax dollars. For more than a century, the Colorado Division of Wildlife has been managing and protecting the state's nearly 1,000 species. And we're proud to say we don't use state tax dollars to accomplish our mission. The Colorado Division of Wildlife, keeping Colorado wild. Over time, the message has evolved to talk about the important role hunters and anglers play in scientific wildlife management and the financial support sportsmen make to the effort. When you enjoy the amazing places and remarkable wildlife that makes Colorado so special. Remember that sportsmen provide nearly all the funding that manages, protects, and conserves these priceless natural resources. So come on out and go a little wild. From its beginning, the Wildlife Council has commissioned independent research to measure the effectiveness of the ad campaign and to determine which messages resonate the best with sportsmen and non-sportsmen alike. The most recent study found that the general public was not paying as much attention to the advertising as in previous years, that non-sportsmen had little interest in becoming hunters and anglers, and that what the general public wanted to hear about in the commercials was very different than what hunters and anglers wanted the advertising to talk about. The report recommended that the advertising messages focus on the shared interests of sportsmen and non-sportsmen, and engage non-sportsmen using a more compelling style of advertising. These findings led the Council to oversee the development of a new ad campaign. We all love Colorado and want to take care of this amazing state. So when you consider that the money from hunting and fishing licenses protects our wildlife and the beautiful places they live, you may want to hug a hunter. To learn more, visit hugahunter.com. The statewide campaign runs six months a year and is timed so that non-sportsmen see and hear the television, radio, and digital ads during peak fishing and hunting seasons. The campaign invites the public to visit a website and Facebook page where they can learn about the benefits of scientific wildlife management, the important role hunters and anglers play in wildlife management, and the economic benefits of hunting and fishing. The results of a recent survey of Colorado citizens found the campaign is working. Seven out of 10 people polled said they would now vote against any restrictions to hunting. Eight out of 10 said they would vote against restrictions on fishing. And 30% said they became more supportive of sportsmen after watching the campaign. In addition, tens of thousands of people have visited the Hug a Hunter website. More importantly, since the campaign began running, not one anti-hunting or fishing ballot initiative has been introduced in the state of Colorado. There are three reasons the Colorado model has been a success. First, the original House bill authorized permanent funding tied to the sale of hunting and fishing licenses. Second, the funds are dedicated to the public awareness campaign and cannot be used for any other purposes. And third, the law created the Wildlife Council, an independent citizens' advisory board charged with managing the funds. The Colorado model offers several important lessons for sportsmen's groups interested in creating similar initiatives in their states. First, public education programs are the best protection against ballot initiatives that would limit the activities of hunters and anglers. Second, it's much easier to create public support for sportsmen than to convince the general public to become hunters and fishermen. Third, state funding must be earmarked for the public education campaign or it will be diverted to other uses. And fourth, having the mass media campaign independently managed increases its effectiveness and cost efficiency. To learn more about how you can implement the Colorado model in your state, contact the Nimrod Society. The Nimrod Society educates sportsmen, wildlife managers, and legislators on the critical need for public education of the societal values of hunters, fishermen, and trappers.